Hello, I am Dr. N. Swapna. This video is about verbal proficiency. I think we all agree that learning English or learning any language takes time and effort and dedication. This course will help you practice and to improve your verbal proficiency. At the end of this lesson, there is a quiz to test your proficiency and you will receive e-certificate if your score is more than 50%. Now, let's start. This course throws light on subject-verb agreement, question tags, redundancies, phrasal verbs, idioms, and you have few exercises to decode the concepts and finally the quiz which you can attend only once. Now, rules of subject-verb agreement. One of the common mistakes that English learners make is to do with the subject-verb agreement. What's that? It's simple as it sounds. The subject and verb in English sentences must agree. That is, they must match. The basic principle is singular subjects need singular verbs and plural subjects need plural verbs. My brother is a nutritionist. That is singular. My sisters are mathematicians. That is plural. The student does her best. The students do their best. Now, you might be thinking that you understand subject-verb agreement. It's simple, it's easy. But it's the first thing that many English learners forget. But don't worry, there are some simple standard rules that can help you. But some aspects of singular and plural noun usage make this a little more complex. That's why... I'm going to teach you some tips to master subject-verb agreement in English. For example, the author analyzes the text that is singular. The author analyzes the text is plural. In the present tense, nouns and verbs agree in opposite ways. When your subject is plural, you usually add yes to show that it is plural as author becomes authors. But when your subject is plural, you do not add yes to your verb. The authors analyze the text. Now compare this to the author analyzes the text. When a noun is singular, a verb needs to include yes. Now, when the prepositional phrases separate the subjects from the verbs, they have no effect on the verbs. The first example, a study on African countries shows that 80% of the people of this continent live below the poverty line. In this sentence, the singular subject, a study, agrees with the singular verb, shows. The prepositional phrase on African countries inserted between the subject and the verb makes agreement difficult. If we aren't careful, we may mistakenly label countries as the subject since it is nearer to the verb. The next example which I have given here is the perspective of different people varies from time to time. Now, the next slide. If the conjunction and is replaced by together with, along with, uh, accompanied by, as well as, the verb will have no effect for the later part of these expressions. The words prior to these expressions are the subjects. Now, in the first example, if you see, Tom, along with his brothers, is going to the city. Here, the conjunction along with his brothers is parenthetical and therefore do not affect the number of the verb. And you have to note one point here. If these expressions are replaced by and, 
the subjects will be regarded as plurals and so the verbs have to be plural tom and his brothers are going to the city now some nouns are always singular and indefinite when these nouns become the subjects they always take singular verbs for example everyone is selfish you can look at so many uh, nouns given there uh, then uh, for example uh, either and neither are singular if they are not used with or and nor given the example z neither of you is responsible enough to handle it either of them deserves a prize now you have note one point here if the subjects join by or and nor and if they are with different persons the verb agrees with the subject nearer to it neither the principal nor the professors were present either he or his friends have made this mistake the next line some nouns are always plural these nouns have two parts for example i have given here scissors shoes shorts eyeglasses pants jeans trousers etc so these words it occur as a pair and hence take a plural verb these shoes are new my pants are in the drawer however these words are preceded by the phrase a pair of means they will be regarded as singular subjects i have given here the example a pair of pants is needed this pair of trousers is ugly now when the expressions a lot of a great deal of plenty of most of some of are singular when they refer to amount or quantity but plural when they refer to number in the first example a lot of work is still pending here work refers to quantity but in the next example if you see a lot of people prefer tea to coffee here people refer to number then the expression one of is followed by a plural noun but it always takes a singular verb the examples i have given here as one of my sisters is an anthropologist okay it is one of when you use one of it is followed Uh, one of is followed by uh, the i mean the expression one of is followed by a plural noun but it always takes a singular verb one of his friends is infected by coronavirus then collective nouns are usually regarded as singular subjects and takes a singular verb because the collection is thought of as a whole the committee has decided to postpone the game the family was ecstatic by the news now in the next slide a number of plus noun is a plural subject because the number is indefinite and it takes a plural verb but the number of plus noun is a singular subject because the number is definite and it takes a singular verb so that is why the first example a number of dancers are coming to the party here indefinite number of dancers so plural verb is used the next example the number of dancers coming to the party is 12 so definite number of dancers so singular verb is used then if a gerund or an infinitive comes as a subject the verb will always be singular gerunds are nouns formed by adding ing to a verb and infinitives are the two forms of verbs such as to run and to sing swimming is a good exercise to err is human
use a singular verb with distances periods of time sums of money etc when considered as a unit that is when a plural number applies to distances weights heights amounts of money and represents a singular figure or quantity it is treated as singular and takes a singular verb that is why 3 miles is too far to walk 10 years is the maximum sentence for that offense 500 rupees is a good sum of money then if a sentence starts with there or here the subject will always be placed after the verb the first sentence there is a meeting today in this sentence a meeting is a subject and it is placed after the verb is here are the results of this month here is the document for your card if two subjects are joined by and and they typically require a plural verb first example the puppy and the lady are friends fire and water do not agree in the second uh, example if you see if two subjects together express one idea the verb may be in singular for example bread and butter is a wholesome food slow and steady wins the race law and order is an election issue these are few examples for that now final rule you have to remember only one thing the subject always affects the verb now next topic here is question tags what is a question tag it is a very short clause at the end of a statement which changes the uh, statement into a question you haven't seen this film have you your sister lives in spain doesn't she now tags are very common in spoken english and have many functions one of the common functions is to start a conversation or help keep it going the two basic rules about tag questions are a positive statement is followed by a negative question tag and a negative statement is always followed by a positive question tag now the next uh, one is redundancies redundancies is a needless repetition of words or ideas we often see and hear redundancies such as free gifts and foreign imports and they can be easy to overlook we should be on the lookout for needless repetition and be ready to eliminate such expressions that add nothing to what's been said i have given few examples here final decision adequate enough early beginnings merge together new beginning advance planning return back attached together emergency situation completely finished all these are redundancies here are few, few examples few redundancies with its meaning is given here first one browse through means to browse is to look through something so through is already contained in its meaning i have given few examples here in the next few slides now we'll see phrasal verbs what is a phrasal verb phrasal verbs combine a base verb with another verb usually a preposition or adverb known as particle to create a completely new meaning they are generally used in spoken english and informal text actually phrasal verbs Uh, they are an important part of learning english language uh, examples turn down come across and run into i have given meaning uh, also for few phrasal verbs in uh, next slide do away with to it means to remove completely or put an end to it it's time to do away with all of these old tax records break out means to escape an example here is a prisoner broke out of prison 
come across means find unexpectedly i came across these old photos when i was studying the bookshelf so i have given few more examples to the next slide now we see idioms idioms are a type of figurative language which means they are not always meant to be taken literally every language has its own collection of wise sayings they offer advice about how to live and also transmit some underlying ideas principles and values of a given culture or society these sayings are called idioms example what i have given here is the best of both worlds it means enjoying two different opportunities at the same time by working part time and looking after her two uh, kids days a week she managed to get the best of both worlds i have given few examples in the next two slides now we have exercise here i have given few questions with answers for you to go through to have a clear understanding of the concepts taught so few exercises you can just have a look into it now we have come to the end and it is time for you to take up the test one attempt is allowed with a minimum passing score of 50% click the link below to complete the quiz and you will receive an e certificate all the very best